All right, so welcome to another video. And today I'm here at the uh, normal supercharger, the uh, Link High Roller here in Las Vegas that I'm at quite often. I'm getting ready to head out of town on a short little camping trip. I am actually just headed up to Mount Charleston for uh, probably a day or two and just kind of feel like doing a little hiking and um, kind of just being out in wilderness and being out in nature. So I'm uh, gonna go to a campground up there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the dispersed camping or if I'm gonna do a campground. And I was looking at uh, the Fletcher's View campground, which is up there. I typically stay at Hilltop, but there's Fletcher's View campground, which actually is the only one on the mountain that has uh, hookups. They have 30 amp hookups. So I'm kind of debating on which one to do there. Um, then I wouldn't have to worry about like heading back, you know, in a day or two to uh, charge. But right now I am up to 93%. It is uh, 1038 in the morning here on Sunday. And so I'm probably gonna unhook here shortly. And so since most of it's all uphill, it's about 35% that uh, I'm gonna probably drain off. And when I come back, I usually actually gain about three or 4%, which is kind of fun because you're just pretty much all downhill on the way back. So right now here in Las Vegas, it is 68 degrees here on the strip. It's about 30 to 35 degrees cooler up in Mount Charleston. So I definitely had to bring jeans, a hoodie, and even a light jacket. So at night, it's actually been getting down into like the high 20s, low 30s. So any cooking I do or anything like that will probably be a little early before sunset uh, while it's still a little warm out. And then as soon as dinner's done, uh, maybe sit around the campfire a little bit and then head to bed. So kind of just a fun few days just to get out of the city and you know just get back into nature. Uh, haven't done that in a little while, so kind of looking forward to it. All right, 95%, let's take off. All right, off to Mount Charleston. All right, so on Kyle Canyon Road here, heading up to Mount Charleston, and it is 60 miles an hour, or actually it's 55 miles an hour here, but I'm going to turn on autopilot. When you're on two lane highways like this, you could only, Tesla will only allow you currently to go five miles an hour over the speed limit. So if I look, if you see I'm going 61 miles an hour now, and I turn on autopilot just by hitting the stock here twice quickly, you can hear autopilot go on. You know, I took my foot off now. I'm gonna put my hand on it because there is a biker right there. And yeah, you can see that it was just warning me about all that, but I'm gonna engage autopilot again. And you can see it's set right now for 60 miles an hour for the full five miles an hour over the speed limit. And it'll obviously adapt based on traffic in front of you. So as you can see, I'm not touching anything. I don't have my wheels in the, I don't have my uh, feet on the pedals or anything like that or steering wheel. And right now I just uh, sit behind this person and it'll go, it'll adapt, but it'll go up to 60 miles an hour. And then if they slow down, even all the way to a stop, it'll do that without a problem. And it'll take, you know, curves and all that stuff. No problem. I typically use it for interstate when I'm just on the open road and I'm driving for, you know, three, four hours at a time, I just turn on autopilot and just let it cruise. And it'll, you know, I have to change lanes because I don't pay for a full self-driving. I don't think it's worth it quite yet, but uh, hopefully that changes over the next year. And then, uh, and then maybe I'll look at uh, getting the subscription. But right now, I'll just use uh, just standard autopilot that comes with every Tesla. Hopefully in the next year or so, they'll upgrade it enough that it'll be worth it. Currently it's not worth 200 bucks a month or, or the $10,000 when you buy. You'll see in a minute, see that little, there you go, and you'll see the blue. So it gives a little warning and then kind of alert again and it'll, go, it'll do a sound alert after those two. So it does the little pop up first, then it does the blue at the top and then it'll start doing an audible alert after that. And that's just telling you to touch the wheel and just kind of jiggle it so that it knows that you're still there. Again, there is a camera that's right up here. And once that camera is taken off of beta and made fully accessible for 
autopilot that will track your eyeballs and it'll make sure that you are paying attention through eye tracking and we won't have to jiggle the wheel every you know every little bit there's the blue there's the alert that came up first i won't touch it see there's the audible alert so now i just jiggle the wheel and we're back That's autopilot uh, heading up in the mountains. No need to say, how will I call? So we gotta, all right, so I just engaged autopilot. We're gonna see how it handles this roundabout. My guess is that it freaks out and doesn't know what to do. Hold on, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> it did not slow. It did not do anything. It was gonna go the full 35 or 40 miles an hour right through. Uh, it had no idea what to do. That's not good. And that was with full autopilot on. Not full self-driving, but with autopilot. It it was ready to go. It did not want to slow down or anything. It didn't look to see if there were any cars or anything. It just kept going. All right, so if I remember correctly, Fletcher's view is not too far up on the left here. So I may go check that out real quick. It's right before I turn, or right after I normally would turn to go up to Hilltop, which is coming up in about six tenths of a mile. Okay. I guess can't go in. <laughs> Hmm. I guess they're not allowing camping right now. So we will turn around. I was thinking about it. Is there, well, yeah, is there, there are hookups, right? Okay. real quick she was very nice and explained how it worked it's a little bit more expensive it's $33 compared to 19 but it also has hookups so and they're the only ones two four eight ten all right cool thank you all right she told me to look at two four eight and ten and then come back and let them know which one I want. And they all have three different types of hookups. I like too that they limit how many people come in. Yeah, the other one, Hilltop, you can, there's people driving through left and right all the time. Okay, definitely gonna do number 10. It's the most private. So I'm gonna do this one on the left here. This is number 10. And that seems to make the most sense. The hiking trail is like right down the road here as well. This one has the hookup and I've never done that at a campground yet. So we're gonna try that together. And then here's the bathroom on the left. And she said they're spotless. They seem to, she was the camp host, her and her husband. So that seems to be the best place to do. Think 10. Ted? Yeah. Okay, I'll meet you there. Okay, cool.
Yep. Yeah. And the restaurant burned down. Oh, did it? Oh, you know about the restaurant? Yeah, I've been up there. Yeah, they, uh, they burned down. The lodge? About three weeks ago, the lodge. Oh, that sucks. That was a nice place, too. Oh, it was, yeah. And, Man, that uh, sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna probably go up there and take some pictures or something. <laughs> there you go. So the only place that you can get a bite to eat or anything else now is the hotel. Okay. All right. Well, Alrighty. I appreciate the help. Yeah, I'll be back in probably like 15 minutes. And what's your name? Uh, Brian. Brian. Yep. I'm Bob. My wife is Liz. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> well, crap. The restaurant, the one I loved up here, that overlooked uh, the entire like mountainous area. That was just beautiful. It burned down like three weeks ago. That sucks. All right, so here at Fletcher's View Campground, I ended up taking the last, uh, the farthest spot, number 10 here. And it is next to the road over here, uh, but it's also kind of a little more private than the other ones. You don't have anybody right next to you. Do you have a little area here? So you can see the road right there, but that's okay. Um, little area for tents. I don't have mine with this time. I typically obviously I sleep in the Tesla, but sometimes I'll bring my screened in tent, you know, cause if there's flies or bugs, things like that, mosquitoes, then don't have to worry about it. But this time of year, don't have any of that out West. It's definitely too dry and too cold for that. It is in the sixties right now and it's beautiful out. I mean, I am definitely not dressed properly. I still got t-shirts, shorts and flip flops on. So uh, I'm definitely not dressed properly. So I'm gonna have to change into some jeans and probably like a sweatshirt. But I just kind of wanted to give you kind of a lay of the land so you can see what's around here. And I'm, I'm gonna show you the hookup here too. Nice little picnic table, nice flat area too to park on, which I love. The other place the hilltop has that too. That's nice on one side. And you got a little fire pit. Along with a grill, although I didn't bring any charcoal, uh, I'll probably just cook on here. Here is the electrical hookup. And kind of see under there, they said there's, yeah, 110, 30 amp, 50 amp. Yeah, nice little uh, campground here. And I love that it's blocked off, that they actually block the road so people can't just drive through. Because typically, these things will get, like at Hilltop, there's literally 100, 150, 200 cars will drive through every single day. And it can get really busy up there. And people are just driving through to check to see what's available. Here, there's only 10 campsites. Uh, Bob and Liz run the whole thing. They're the camp hosts. And they don't let anybody in unless you're actually staying here. And so that's great. So there's no real traffic, although there's a little traffic on the road out here, there's no real traffic in the campground, which is nice. And so it's a little safer and you just don't have any crazy partying and things like that. So that's great. I might actually end up staying here a little more often then. And of course, having the electrical hookups just makes it so much easier. Don't have to worry about using the Jackery. You can just plug everything in and cook right from there. All right, so before I start charging and show you guys how I do that with the adapter that's for campgrounds, I wanted to show you where we're at here now. We left with 96% and we currently have 64%. Again, it's only like a 45 minute drive, but it's all uphill. So you're gonna use quite a bit of juice. And typically on the way back, you'll gain about four or 5% when you go back down the mountain, which I've shown in previous videos. But one of the things that I always kind of ran into was if I wanted to drive around different parts of the mountain or go to different, you know, hiking trails, I had to make sure that I had enough battery. Otherwise I'd have to run all the way back to Vegas to charge. So it's like a 45 minute drive back and I have to charge and then come back. And it's kind of just a hassle. Now here, you know, yes, it was $33 compared to $19, but I got electrical hookup. Don't have to worry about any of that. I'll have a full charge. This time I probably really didn't need to do it, but kind of just decided that it made sense. Plus I could show you guys how the adapters work at campgrounds and so how to hook all that stuff up. We'll turn camp mode on right now since we're here. And so we'll just go right over here, hit camp mode. And that's now on. We'll turn the back on too. I have it currently set at 69 degrees. 
it'll uh, just stay there basically. So if it needs to use heat, it'll use heat. If it needs to use air conditioning, it'll use air conditioning. So it basically just keeps it at whatever temperature you want. And I have airflow coming out both the left and the right in the front, as well as coming out the back. All right, so let's go show you how the hookups work at campgrounds when you have a Tesla. All right, so I'm here at the Fletcher's View campground. And today I wanted to kind of go through what you're gonna do when you get to a campground if you wanna charge your Tesla. So as far as charging, there's actually a, a few different options you can choose from. So all three of the options all include still using the Tesla mobile charger. So you're gonna need to use that. And it basically just comes down to what you're connecting to the Tesla mobile charger. Is it gonna be a regular wall adapter for just like a 110 volt, which uh, just plugs right in right there? Is it gonna be 30 amp for a campground? One of those adapters? or is it gonna be the 50 amp adapter? I'll make sure to link to all the adapters below. Uh, the first one here, the 110 volt uh, wall adapter, this actually comes with your Tesla. So this will come attached to this right here. So you don't have to worry about picking that one up. This uh, 50 amp adapter, this is also from the official Tesla accessory website. So you can just pick it up on Tesla's website. Uh, I believe all the adapters on there are $35 where they do sell like a whole pack for, I don't know, a couple hundred or something like that. I just ended up getting like the three that I needed the most often. All right, so this 30 amp adapter is actually from Amazon. This is the standard 30 amp adapter you're gonna use for any campground. Of the three options, obviously you're gonna to wanna to go with whatever the fastest one is, which in this case would be the 50 amp. So all you gotta do is just take the end of it and put it into the mobile Tesla charger here, pop it in and that's it. And so this will just go into the 50 amp hookup at your campground. And of course, this side just goes into the car. I'll go ahead though and show you all three options over at the post. All right, so this is pretty much the standard electrical post that you'll get at most campgrounds. And so I'll open it up here. You can see down here, you have the regular 110 volt, just like you'd see in a house, just a regular outlet. You have the uh, 30 amp for like RVs and stuff like that. And then you have the 50 amp for RVs as well. The 30 amp, that one seems to be like, they don't sell that one on Tesla's website. You have to get that one from Amazon or somewhere like that. So again, I'll link all of the adapters down in the description below that you'll need. All right, so for the uh, regular, just wall out at 110 volt, you would just take that and of course, just plug it in right there. All right, and so for the 30 amp RV plug, you can see right here, that would just go and plug in right there. And here's the 50 amp, which is of course the fastest one. So that's the one we're gonna to use today. And that would just go in here, pushed all the way in. That's pushed all the way in now. All right, so one thing you do wanna make sure is before you plug it into the car, you wanna make sure that this is turned on. So there's usually a breaker right here. You're just gonna flip that one up and that's it. All right, and then you're just gonna take the Tesla mobile charger and you're just gonna open up your charge port, take it. All right, let's see if, yep, it's charging. So we got green, that's a good sign. That means it is accepting a charge. You can see here on the post, just got the 50 amp adapter direct from Tesla. I believe it's 35 bucks and I will link to it below. All right, so you can see we're getting currently eight kilowatts in. So not super fast. Uh, it's at 32 amps, 243 volts. And so we're at currently at 62%. You can remember we left, it was 96%. And that was about, oh, maybe around 10, 30, 11 a.m. this morning. It's almost 2 p.m. now. Everything on the way here was uphill. So used about 30% getting up here. And then I've had camp mode on for the last couple hours. So let's go ahead and just try plugging in the 30 amp for RVs as well as the 110 volt. All right, so. I have plugged in the 30 amp RV adapter and we will take the mobile adapter and see, getting blue, it should go green. All right, the RV adapter works. It's the first time using it actually. Okay, so you can see 11 hours and 20 minutes, so much slower. The other one is about four hours. Uh, it's only getting two, one to two kilowatt. Well, and now it's showing three. The other one was showing eight at 32 amps and 240 some volts. This one's showing three kilowatts, 24 amps, 121 volts. So obviously quite a bit slower 
And now we'll check the 110 volt, which is just like plugging into a regular wall outlet. That's gonna be super slow. All right, as you can see, that one was a little tricky to get in because it's upside down. So had to pop that in that way. Take the charge connector, open the port. Should go green in a second, there it is. All right, also really slow. Showing over 21 hours. So yeah, we're seeing we're getting two kilowatts in, 12 amps, uh, 123 volts, and again, 21 and a half hours. Obviously, we're not gonna worry about that. We could leave it in and just let it charge all night, but obviously we'll just do 50 amp. That means in the next four hours, that should be full. So by 6 p.m. tonight, I'll have 100% battery. All right, so obviously we're gonna go with the faster one. So I'm gonna go rehook the 50 amp and we'll let that go and instead about four hours and it should be full. All right, so that's how you hook up your Tesla at a campground. Pretty straightforward, three different adapters, one Tesla mobile charging. Again, I'll put the links to all of those adapters and cords and everything else that I have for charging in the description below. I'll just put a little section for charging and you'll see everything there. All right, so just leaving the campground, going for a hike, going to Kyle Canyon Trail. So it should just be about not even a quarter mile up the road here. If you wanna go all the way up the ridge here and up there, so it's about a three mile hike. And she said, go down to the second bridge and go left and then just take that across the road and go keep going up. All right, so this is actually the one I was thinking of, but this is the Fletcher Canyon Trailhead. I was getting the name confused. All right, I gotta take my jacket off. Too hot. I'm not used to the hiking at altitude. <laughs> Pretty views though. Yeah, definitely not uh, used to hiking at altitude. Put jeans on, bad move. It's only 55 degrees out right now. I don't know if you can even see that, but I just take my hoodie off already. And the jeans were probably a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. It takes it out of you, that's for sure. I'm only like 15, 20 minutes in. Still fun though. Just great being out in nature. All right, first decision. Trail 1.86. Straight uphill. <laughs> or keep going this way. I think I'm gonna go this way. That looks more fun. That looks really hard. That looks really beautiful and kind of easy. I think I might go that way. All right, so we chose wisely. We are choosing the less crazy one. Maybe tomorrow I'll do the other one, but that one was like literally straight uphill. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I'm ready for all that right now. Plus this one I think was the one that went along the bluff, so should have some really nice views. I looked at the map, it said only almost two miles.
It is so silent where I'm at. I don't know if I've ever heard anything this quiet. There's literally no sound. That is so weird. I mean, there's just nothing. There's no wind, no animals, no creaking of trees, no nothing. Silence. Yeah, just listen to that. Nothing. <laughs> it's like so eerie and weird. I mean, it's, it's in a way it's very calming because there's like, I just, I don't know if I've ever heard anything that silent. I mean, I don't even hear like a bird chirp or bugs or anything. It's kind of weird. You can see like the mountain up there. I am currently, let's see, 1.6 miles in, about 44, 45 minutes. So I'm going to keep going. I think it said 1.79, something like that miles. So far, it's going good. Taking a little break for a second and just like, that silence is just weird. But uh, like I said, pretty calming. All right, so I'm going to go a little bit farther. I'm going to walk to probably about two miles and if I don't come into an end by then then I'll probably just turn around and head back it is 335 right now so we'll see uh see how far we can make it onward and upward <laughs> I'm not gonna go too much farther I don't think like I said I'll walk till about two miles so about three tenths of a mile more. We'll see if uh, anything spectacular at the end. <laughs> okay. I think the other way might be a little more open. Ugh. All right, a little more treacherous. <laughs> oh, that could have been bad. All right. I'm gonna keep going a little bit farther. I'm gonna put the camera down because that's pretty much a straight up hill. <laughs> Super beautiful. So if I keep going up a little bit, what I do know is that is snow. You can see some more snow up there. I'll zoom in. Look at that. Again, dead silent. I mean, it is just quiet. I could literally hear a pin drop or a rock fall. All right, so now it's getting a little questionable. A little bit beyond my pay grade for hiking. Yeah, I don't think it really goes on to. might go a little farther, but I'm not going to go up that. It looks a little too treacherous by myself if I fall or something like that. Oh, I'm going to go up. <laughs> All right. Oh, man.
not the easiest to do holding a camera either. And I think this is probably going to be easier going up than it is down. This is the end. <laughs> catch my breath all right so I think we're probably around I don't know maybe 8,000 feet elevation and that was get it to focus 1.98 miles and took just around an hour so great views I'm gonna hang out here, catch my breath, have a little water. As you saw, there's snow on the ground right over there. So uh, it's chilly, but I mean, I'm so hot right now from hiking that it feels like it's like 85 degrees out, but it, it's actually probably about 55 degrees. Oh, I just heard a little wind. It was dead silent otherwise. All right, so just got to the end of the hike. It officially says just over two miles. And right when I got up here where the snow was, it cooled off quick. Uh, I ended up having to put the hoodie back on. Uh, super cold. I mean, like I'd say it's probably in the 40s right now, maybe like mid to high 40s. And kind of see like basically just surrounded by, <laughs> surrounded by mountains. So there's no sun right here. And that definitely made a difference. All right, so I think I got my exercise in for today. Uh, it was a lot of fun just being out here. It was actually a really nice hike. It was like perfect distance. Uh, felt like a great workout. At the same time, it probably is only gonna take about two hours round trip. So kind of a nice little hike. Like I said, I think this looks to be the end. You might be able to go a little farther, but you'd probably have to be pretty skilled at climbing. Um, I'm not, so <laughs> for me, amateur, just having fun out here, enjoying nature. Time for me to head back. Uh, when I get back to the campground, I'm gonna cook up a little bit of steak tonight and just looking forward to a nice relaxing evening. Hopefully get a fire going. The wind was pretty bad on that side of the mountain. So I'm not quite sure if I'm going to end up making a fire tonight or not. Might end up just using the electric grill. So we'll see. But either way, going to make a nice dinner tonight. Uh, enjoy the evening and then probably head back to Vegas either tomorrow or Tuesday. Kind of depends on if I decide to play in one of the World Series of Poker events tomorrow. If I do, I'll probably head back in the morning. It's a two-day event, so not exactly sure. But either way, this weekend, I'll be heading to two national parks, at least I think two, maybe one. And so definitely have some climbing and some hiking and stuff going on there too. So stay tuned. All right, time to head back. Got some ice here. <laughs> so you gotta be a little careful because you don't want to fall down there. Alright, a little easier on the way down. <laughs> it's actually like a nice casual walk. Once I got past the kind of treacherous area back there, this is a lot nicer. Definitely a lot harder coming up. I just came across those. Kind of cool. Hopefully there's nothing under there. <laughs> okay, good news. There's that sign. There's that other trail. The straight up the hill one. Yeah, Eagle's Nest Loop Trail 1.86. That way. And we came up this way. So we're going to continue down. Go eat some dinner, cook up some steak. Wow. All right, made it to the bottom. 
All right, so I do have the Jackery here, but I don't really need to use it because I can just run the cord from the 110, run that all the way over there where I'll cook. So no reason to do that. And like I said, it's just a little too windy out to risk you know, the fire. And with three weeks ago, that awesome restaurant called The Lodge here on Mount Charleston burning down during a wildfire. I just have no interest in being responsible for something like that. So I'm gonna choose not to cook with fire tonight and I'll just use the electric stove. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna make some steak here. So, see this, little New York strip steak. Some green beans and some mashed potatoes. I was gonna get some like, try to make it like totally authentic and make the whole thing like mash up some potatoes, but with the temperature outside, it's just way too cold. So I'm gonna do these kind of instant ones where you just have to throw some water in there and make it on the stove top. And I'm gonna do that last actually, because that only takes one minute. I'm gonna do the green beans first, because then I can put them into a bowl. That is already hot, so that's good. Let's put the top on there. That'll heat up pretty quick. And then on the steak, I'm just gonna put a little seasoning on there, a little Creole seasoning, and some salt and pepper. Good amount of pepper. Let's flip that baby over. <laughs> All right, just gonna put a little bit of olive oil on there. Put some in the pan too. And then I will swap that, put the pan on there, get that real hot, put the steak on there, and then I'll save the mashed potatoes for last because they only take a minute once you have boiling water. Man, if you just knew how cold and windy it is right now. I feel like I'm in Minnesota, not 45 minutes from Bellagio. Okay, this is done. I'm gonna crank that back up because I'm gonna throw the steak on there in a second. So let's throw that on there. Let's... Uh, Let's drain that. I'm just gonna throw a little butter in here with this, a little salt and pepper, and that's pretty much it. All right, we'll throw it in here for right now, just to keep it somewhat warm. Might have to throw it back on. Go ahead and dump that in. Move that around the olive oil in there but I am gonna put the top on just to help keep the heat in. Typically I wouldn't do that, but kinda of have to right now. All right, let's check it real quick. Been a few minutes. Oh, yeah. All right, so I think that one side's probably done. Yep, perfect. Get the other side just about the same. Should be good to go. All right, so I just checked it. It actually cooked a little more than I wanted it to. So we're gonna take that off. We're actually gonna leave the top on for a second. Put that over here. Get this water boiling real quick. All right, so time for the mashed potatoes. It looks like more than two, <laughs> it looks like more than two cups of water. Ah, crap. Well, let's hope. I had to eyeball it, so. Oh, actually, it's okay. Although it's, holy crap, that is fast. <laughs> yep, that's literally it. Super convenient. Let's throw some butter in there. So let's stir that up. A little bit of salt. One more stir. So we'll do that. Let's 
Look at that steak. Perfect. Dinner is served. All right, so it is dinner time. And dinner time in the Tesla Model Y, you gotta have your table setting, right? So let's get that going right there. I'm gonna dig in and I'm super pumped because I'm so hungry from that after that hike. So everything got cooked up and everything on time. We're probably gonna lose light, I'm guessing in about maybe 35, 40 minutes. So ended up making it just in time. I'm gonna watch a little YouTube, eat dinner, and uh, then clean everything up and prepare the car for bed. So I'll see you after dinner and I'll show you kind of the setup before I go to bed. And that's it. Yeah, super good. Steak is actually really good. Ah, it's cold out. My nose is starting to run a little bit. Actually, everything's like on point. Those are like the most instant potatoes I've ever seen. They're ready in like 10 seconds. Man, that's good. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of this and then I'll see you right before bedtime. All right, so putting up the Evanex window cover now. I usually just put the black side out. Kind of has a little bit extra at the bottom and you just push it in. And that's it, you don't need the suction cups or anything. And I put black Gorilla tape over all of the holes and that works perfect. When we wake birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun all right well good morning it is 7 20 a.m and as you can see the sun's coming up and it is chilly out <laughs> it is super chilly let's see 38 degrees fahrenheit and uh, we got some campers over there that came yesterday. They were pretty cool. Now decided that I'm probably gonna take off here shortly. I am gonna run up to the lodge, which is uh, the restaurant that was here. And it was like just such a nice place. They'd have live music up there. And uh, it was just, during the summer, it was fantastic because it just overlooked the, all the mountains around here. And unfortunately it burned down. I, I didn't see all the details. Uh, from wildfire or what, but ended up, um, it did not affect the cabins that were next to it, but uh, it did burn down the restaurant. It's kind of been a staple in this community for a long time. So that's unfortunate. I'm gonna run up there and just check it out and see what I can see. And I'll try to throw in some video of what it was prior uh, to a couple, a few weeks ago. All right, well, I'm gonna start getting ready to head back to Vegas and I will, uh, I'm going to drive up to the lodge, like I mentioned, and take a look at that and then head back to Vegas. So I'll see you at the lodge. Oh yeah. In 500 feet, turn right to stay on Kyle Canyon Road. Then your destination will be on the right. Yep. So these are the cabins, the Mount Charleston cabins, and straight ahead is where the the lodge was. Now I don't see any other stuff burned around here, so uh, this looks to be an isolated incident, and not. I mean, you can see all the rubble right there. Man, this is such such a cool place. I'll show some video and some pictures now from how this looked like, well, when I was here earlier in the summer, maybe like two months ago. Yeah, I mean, I have footage of me walking up to this sign 
in that video. So I'll throw that in now. Mount Charleston Lodge is on the left here. So I think that's where I'm gonna go and just try to figure things out from there. Bunch of little cabins up here and stuff. Yeah, I might actually just go here and grab some dinner. All right, so I got here to Mount Charleston Lodge and Cabins. Uh, it's only about 30, 35 minutes from Bellagio. Crazy, but man. 73 degrees out compared to 106. Look at that. Then got a little uh, lodge over here, which I will be eating at right now. And then from there, kind of just deciding uh, what I want to do for the night. Yeah, the other trees and stuff don't seem to be too burnt, like in the area. So I wonder if this was just an isolated incident. So the reason I thought it might be wildfire is because you can kind of see on that hill behind over there, that all looks charred. So it may have been a wildfire. As I was getting back into my car, there was like a fire marshal that was coming out from one of the cabins here. And he went over here to pick up some trash that was near. And I was chatting with him for a second and he, I asked him if it was a wildfire and he said they actually don't know what caused it. Uh, it happened, I think it was on the 17th of September or the 19th, it happened like 5.30 in the morning and they're not exactly sure what it was. Uh, when I was pointing up to the hill up there where that was kind of singed, he said that happened actually in 2014. So that actually takes a while to regrow that <laughs> and still under investigation. So yeah, pretty crazy. Um, you know, the owners I saw in an article said that they were planning to rebuild. So, so that's cool. Um, gonna be interesting though to follow and find out what the investigation unveils, but yep. Uh, yeah, he said it was heartbreaking to see, you know, this is such a staple in this community and stuff. So. But like I said, hopefully they come back uh, bigger, better, and stronger than ever. So, all right, guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like the video if you want to see more like it. And I will see you in the next travel or review video. Thanks, guys. Bye.